Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and today we are going to talk about how you can stop analysis paralysis forever. We're going to stop overthinking, we're going to stop overanalyzing, and we're just going to take some actions. Now I know that the struggle is real, and I know what you guys are going through because I do it myself often, and so we're going to get ourselves, each other, out of this cycle. So first of all, if you are not in our Facebook group, please, please, please join us in our Facebook group because we are here to support you. That is exactly why we're here. We're here to support you and your business and all the different things that you're doing. So make sure that you join us at mommyincome.com forward slash join us. And you need a code word. And today's code word is stop AP, aka analysis paralysis. Also, if you are watching this on YouTube right now, take a moment to click the subscribe button and turn on the notifications so that you know all of when every video and every episode of the Amazon Files airs because we want you to be subscribed and you want to be in the know. So let's talk about that. Oh, first, but first, it's Memorial Day. And because of Memorial Day, I want to acknowledge the service providers, the men and women who continually spend their energy to protect and serve the American dream. And those international friends who are doing the same for their beloved homeland. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for your dedicated service in protecting our freedom here. I don't take that for granted. I'm thankful for each one of you, no matter what role you have played in maintaining and helping this wonderful country state the way that it is. So thank you for your service, whether it was yesterday or 50 years ago, your service does not go unnoticed or unappreciated. Thank you for being part of that. I appreciate that so much. Happy Memorial Day to everyone. And I'm really hoping that you are ready to rock and roll. So let's talk about, I know who you are. I know who you are. You are an overthinker. You're overanalyzing, uh, shiny object chaser, anyone? I know you guys look. The struggle, the struggle is real. It is. So because of the struggle is real, We know we can get stuck in research mode forever. Hello, analysis paralysis. You have so much information that you don't know what to do with all of it. So much information that you're not exactly sure what to go, what to do. And so oftentimes what happens? We get analysis paralysis and we're just spinning that wheel that's loading and loading and loading and we have 412 tabs open at a time. What we generally end up doing is procrastination and or nothing, nothing at all. And then the next day we spin the same wheels and we figure out some other way to push off the decision that's at hand. But in the Amazon FBA world, there are so many Facebook groups and YouTube channels and blogs and gurus and podcasts and tools and software shoved down our throat all the time. It's really hard to stay focused. It's really hard to stay focused. I want to talk to you about why you feel the need to have all these things or some assumptions about why (laughs) and the reason why you don't use some of them and how we can kind of break this cycle so that we can continually make forward progress, but not only with apprehension, but also with confidence. Because as business owners, we are faced with millions and millions of decisions, even from the minute to the big, to the the extravagant, to really simple mundane things. But as a business owner, we're not passing the buck to someone else to make the decision. We have to make all the decisions. And decision fatigue is real, friends. It's real. Decision fatigue is when you've made so many decisions that you stop making good and correct decisions because you're so overwhelmed with how many decisions you have to make that your brain is on overload and you're not able to make the decisions that you want to make that is best for you and your business and your bottom line because we make too many other decisions in life. So the first things first is what can you do in your life to make your life easier and automatic? Things that don't require decisions. I mean, you when you get in your car, you make a decision about where you're going. You probably made that decision long before you got in your car. 
But then, you know, I'm going to the grocery store. You don't have to make a decision about necessarily what grocery store you're going to. You know, you pretty much go to Publix or you pretty much go to Kroger or Costco or wherever it is you all be. Uh, that's where you go. So you're not necessarily making a decision about that. But then other things like we have to make decisions every single day. What are we going to wear? What are we going to eat? How multiple times a day? What are we going to eat? Where are we going to go? How are we going to move our bodies? And then we have all these business decisions. What about this or this? I mean, even in your home, what contractor are you going to hire to remodel your kitchen? You know, there's so many choices, so many options. Same thing with our business. When it comes to tools for your business, decisions are going to be hard. There's no shortage of products to buy and services to buy and courses to buy and all that stuff. Which ones do I need? Which ones do I want? Everyone is saying the same thing. Pick me, pick me, do my service, do my course, do my thing. But you, as a business owner, need to two things before you can even decide what software or tools that you wanna use. And this is more about how you choose the best of the best for you. Because the best of the best for me might be completely different than what works for you because of multiple things. Where are you in your business? What kind of budget you have? What kind of business model are you running? Where are you running said business model? Do you do you have multiple team members? Are you, you know, are you at this level or this level? Do you have a bigger budget than someone else? So your business decisions and the tools that you need and the tools that are going to make your business model the best that it can be are going to be your decisions. So what I'm gonna help you do first is help you make better decisions about anything. And then you apply that to the software systems or the uh, programs and tools and all the different things that you want and you run them through this checklist, if you will, of things that you need to do to kind of make a good decision. Because if you struggle with de decision fatigue and if you struggle with like overanalyzing and uh, analysis paralysis and overthinking like most of us do, right, then you need a way to start effectively and efficiently make those decisions faster and easier. The number one thing that prevents people from making a decision or having analysis paralysis and overthinking is because they're afraid to make mistakes or lose money. That's like the number one reason for like indecision or no action at all is like, really, I'm scared. What happens if I invest in this tool and I'm spending a hundred dollars a month and I don't get what I want or don't get what I need or the what if, what if, what if? And then there's the other side of the fear. What if I don't? What am I missing? What am I missing out on FOMO, anyone? Fear of missing out. We all have a degree of FOMO and we always have that. So we think we are going to miss the boat and the boat will never come back. And we're going to be stranded on the island that we're on and we must get on the boat now. Otherwise, we're literally going to stay here and suffer. Well, first of all, you have to ask yourself, where you're at right now, are you suffering? Because the FOMO and the missing out and the get it now before it goes away and all that stuff, like, I get it, y'all. I'm a marketer. I understand what it's like to have to market to people. But the reality is you, as a business owner, the person that's putting your credit card number into anything, gets to decide where and how you spend your money and why. And FOMO <laughs> is not a decision maker. Because I can promise you this, you might miss out on a price break. You might miss out on a founder deal at some point. You might even, I mean, y'all, no, I support founder deals and I support a lot of companies and, and I am affiliated with a lot of companies and I love their products and services, but I'm going to be the first one to tell you, you don't need all the things all the time. There's going to be times in your business where you're going to need more training. There's going to time, be times in your business where you are excelling and you really don't need any more training. You just need a lot more action steps. You need to just keep moving forward. There's other times you're going to need a software system or a freelancer or someone on Fiverr or a VA to solve some problems for you because it's either you don't have enough time or you don't have enough, uh, it's not in your wheelhouse to do so. So you have to consider all of those things before you make any good decisions about products, services, courses, you don't, on what you need or don't need, you really need to determine a few things. So this can be like a really, this is like two or three questions total of what you need to ask yourself before you put your credit card number in or before you hit buy it now on some of these services, courses, things like that. The first thing is your goals. Now, some of you don't even have goals 
or you didn't have any goals written down. You started an Amazon business, you just started to do a bunch of tasks and you haven't really sat down to be like, what's my goal here? What am I trying to accomplish? What will I be able to accomplish? So that's one of the things that you need to do when it comes to deciding on tools and services and software and courses and all of the things. I'm just gonna call them tools because right now that they're all tools of some sort. What you have to ask yourself, what will I be able to accomplish by adding this tool? What goal does this tool help me reach? So write that down somewhere. What goal does this tool help me reach? that I'm not already utilizing some other place? What does this tool do that the other tools I have don't do? And how is it going to contribute to my goals? So I'll give you a prime example of FOMO and me purchasing some things and me thinking about some things because I am like addicted to learning, right? I'm addicted to courses and learning and I love learning new things. As a matter of fact, I set, to, set aside a couple hours today to be able to learn something from a couple of um, different places. And, you know, I'm constantly educating myself as well. I think that's really, really important to grow as a, an individual and as a professional and as an expert in something. You're constantly learning all the new things and making sure that you're aware of them and practicing them. But sometimes we get into courses because we're interested in them, but that they're, they're, it's not part of the goal. One of the reasons why we signed up was because of FOMO or because of something that we thought we are going to miss out on these things. Now, I will tell you this. I bought a Pinterest course. I love Pinterest. I love Pinterest for personal use though. I really do. I have some stuff on Pinterest. I've pinned some different things and we, we don't really have like a Pinterest strategy here at Mommy Income. We have some pins, but mostly Pinterest is personal and I love it. And I love to go there and scroll and look and read. And I, I just, it's one of my, it's a favorite platform of mine but mostly I use it for personal use. So I saw Pinterest and Pinterest course and how to make money with Pinterest and how to create the best pins. And you know, it was only $27, right? It's $27. I bought the course for $27. Why? Number one, $27. I can spend that like literally at Taco Bell with my family. So I'm thinking, okay, 27 bucks. Number one, the barrier to entry there was only less than 30 bucks. Like I buy wine that's more expensive than that sometimes. So the cost wasn't part of the factor. It was just like, oh, that's pretty inexpensive. But it was the content and the like the the FOMO of like, if you don't buy this for $27, next week it's going to be $127. Now, yes, that hurts a little if I had to pay $127 for that course. But that wasn't the problem either. The problem was not necessarily missing out on a good deal, which I hate doing. Like we all do not want to miss out on a good deal, right? But what I forgot to ask myself was, what will I be able to accomplish by adding this tool or this course? What is my goal? What is the main problem in my business that I want to solve with this tool? <laughs> the answer to that question, of course, after I make the purchase, is nothing, <laughs> nothing at all, zero. Zero percent of this course is going to help me with my business goals because my business goals are not to to grow my Pinterest um, boards and grow my Pinterest uh, following or whatever else. It's just not advantageous to what we do here at Mommy Income. So that doesn't make sense for my business. Yet the FOMO and the inexpensive price and the marketing and the flashing, you'll be able to do this, this, and this afterwards. All the promises hooked me right in. But I made what I would consider a bad decision because I have that course. It's been sitting there, let me tell you, for almost four months. Have I even logged in and opened? No, haven't logged in, haven't opened it. Still there, still from an amazing lady, still from an amazing price that I got. But still, the reason why I never opened it is because, you know what, it's not, it was never a priority to begin with. So it's not about the money that I wasted, even though it was only $27 at the time. It's not about the money I saved in case I wanted it later. It was just about making an emotional split second decision that didn't answer this question here. What does the main, what is the main problem I want to solve in my business? And does this tool or this course or whatever else help me reach that goal? The answer is no. I don't care if it's 50 cents. Don't spend your money there. 
It's not about the money. And it's also not about what happens if the boat leaves and I can never get on it again. Well, how many things have actually, in reality, of all of your experience, been a one-time purchase only and it was never available again anywhere else for any other price any other time? I cannot really think of anything. There is one limited edition jersey that I purchased at one point that literally like when they were gone, they were gone and they've never hit the market ever again. And that was like something that I'm glad I jumped on at the time. But it was like a limited edition collector's like version of this jersey. So yeah, that makes sense to be like, if you don't get it now, you'll never have access to it again unless someone sells one on the black market and then you know you're going to pay out the nose for that. So the reality is in the moment, none of these things are going away forever and the cart will never be closed, open again. I mean, it's not true. Someone that's creating a course, creating online material, creating a tool or software, anything like that, they plan on running their business probably for decades. They're not going to close the doors on Inventory Lab and tell you you can never come back again or Helium 10 or any of these other things that are out there. So you need to be aware that, number one, that FOMO is really false. Stuff's not going away. It's not. You might have to pay a little bit more for it later on, but time is money. And think about that course that I bought for $27 that has been sitting there for four months. Like I could have waited and spent another, you know, or I could have really analyzed it and realized I wasted $27 because for four months I just put $27 in a black hole and never thought of it again because I had FOMO. Like that's what my FOMO cost me was $27. Now, if you're going to spend $27 or $2,700, this question is the most important. What is the main goal? What is the main problem that you want to solve in your business right now? And what is the best tool or service or course or person that's going to help me accomplish that one thing? So do you want to become more efficient? Do you want to reduce costs? Do you want to create automation? Do you want to be faster and more accurate research, bookkeeping, trademarking, Um, researching products, importing, whatever the most important thing for your business right now today, what is that problem that you want to solve and what tools are available to help you reach that goal? Now, I know this seems very like rigid or strict sometimes, but the whole point here is like in order for you to not waste money on a bunch of stuff you think you might need at some point, spend the majority of your dollars for services and products and tools and coaching and education that will help you right now. Because you're not there yet down the road. And even if the price is $100 more or $1,000 more next week, if you're not ready to take action on that thing right now, you don't need it right now. And even if it costs more later on, just guess what? If you do the things right now in your business that are requiring you to be present right now and fix right now, you'll have more money and time later to spend more money on that course if you need it. But the reality is you probably won't buy that. You need what you need right now and you need to use it. So those are part of it. The second part of this is your budget. Because guess what? We all have a budget. I hate that word, but it's true. No matter if you make a million dollars or a thousand dollars, you still have a budget. We can't just spend whatever we want on whenever we want, anytime we want. We all have limited time and money. You know, no matter what that is for everyone, it all is the same. Both time and money. What is your budget? Ask yourself this. How much am I willing to spend to accomplish my goal? That is a great question that most people don't ask themselves. What am I willing to spend to accomplish my goals, both in time and money? The next question is, does this purchase, does this tool, service, software, course, whatever, does this make sense for my business right now? And I don't mean six months from now. I mean, right now in your business, what's your number one problem and what, how do you need to solve that? And does it make sense for your business right now? Next question, do I have the time to implement this new tool right now? What is available in your budget? 
for time and money. So helium 10 is something I support. You guys know I support T uh, helium 10 and merchant words and several others, AMZ scout. There's several. Thanks for my, for our sponsors. You know, whatever. <laughs> I know it's going to be so funny. Um, I'm like, here's a word from our sponsor. No, uh, you guys know all the tools that I love and I've mentioned many of them here already. We're not touting any sort of specific tool or resource right now. This is all about making the decisions because guess what? I'm trying to position you and trying to encourage you and help you understand that you are a CEO. You're the owner. You are the business owner. No matter if you're working two jobs right now and this is just your side, side, side hustle, you are still a CEO and owner of a small business. And you're going to need to learn how to make proper decisions. And it can be easier than you think. If you just write down these questions, you know what? I'm going to produce a something for you, a checklist. It's not going to be available in this episode. <laughs> so it, it's forthcoming. But I can, I can make a document right here to kind of check off these questions to help you not stop overthinking and overanalyzing and just make good, solid business decisions that don't have to do with emotion right? Because yeah, we do feel emotions. I'm a very emotional person. I'm like an Enneagram too. I feel my emotions and yours at the same time. Like I'm very empathetic and that's part of me. But that's why I've had to develop these plans for myself to be like, take your FOMO emotion out of it and decide what your business needs right now and act on that. And that's how I've become a lot more successful and make decisions easier and faster these days. Because I need to know that the thing that's going to help fix stuff in my, my business right now. So what is your available budget as far as time? Like Helium 10, for example, love Helium 10, but Helium 10 has a longer and stiffer learning curve than other tools and softwares. So Helium 10 may be the best tool for your business at the time, but it requires maybe two hours of training per week to understand really how to use it the best way that you know how to use it. So if you don't have two hours to dedicate yourself to learning the software and then practicing the software, you're not going to utilize it to its fullest potential. And then you're wasting not just a one-time fee, but a monthly fee. That's even worse. Add it up over time. Helium 10 at the Elite was like $100 a month or something like that even is $100 a month. That's $1,200 a year. Would you just toss $1,200 a year into the black hole because you're just like, oh, well, I really need this and it was a good deal, but I'm just not utilizing it right now because I don't have the time to learn it. I'll take your $1,200 a year for you to not do anything. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll give you my PayPal email right now and you can send me your $1,200 because if you're going to waste it, you might as well put it in my pocket because I won't waste it for you. I will use it. <laughs> So that's my point. My point is, is that if you're not going to use it right now, then you can sign up for Helium 10 six months from now when you're ready for it. But you don't have to sign up for today. And guess what? Their prices may go up a little, but generally speaking, they've had the same prices for a really long time and they're not removing any discounts and you're, they're, 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 they're around. So you don't have to feel FOMO about that kind of stuff. If it's not right for you in your business right now and you're not dedicated to learning how it works and then utilizing it to the best of its ability, don't sign up. You're not going to miss anything except the money that's floating out of your pocket for not using something. Other decision questions. Thinking about these things as far as this tools and softwares. Because I bet y'all thought I was going to sit here and tell you Helium 10 versus Merchant Words and Jungle Scout versus AMZ Scout. And I'm going to tell you all the different bells and whistles and tools. Yeah, I have time for that later. And I'm going to be making review videos this year about these tools and softwares that I love and things that I don't love. Um, but the reality is this is more about you making the best decision for your business and not what everyone else is doing. Because in case you didn't know, your business is none of mine. And my business is none of yours or none of anybody else's. What works for you and what's best for you, you have to decide. And it's not based on testimonials from other people. You say, what do I need right now? And what is the best fit? And then we talk to friends and family and be like, okay, I have this problem. I mean, when I have problems with issues, like I had an issue with my daughter this week at school and I was literally like beside myself. You know, you ever find out like you have a really, really good kid and then they one time do something bonehead and you're just like, oh, so disappointed in them. But you're also like not mad because you realize that's not their normal characteristics and they just kind of acted out of character. Yeah, that happened this week and I cried about it and I was just thinking like, well, what do I do? What are what are the consequences for that? What is the decision that needs to be made in this thing? What is the right move and right decision to make in this moment? 
and the the reality there is is that we have to we have to do things that are best for us and our family i was googling like the best way to handle the situation for a parent child because none of my other kids really had this experience and she's a really good kid and you know just did just kind of made a bad decision and so i was like well what am i supposed to do about this because like i really don't think that like punishment or main consequences really happens i think she got the natural consequences of being like embarrassed and being um you know like natural consequences for what she did was just like losing some trust with a couple of people and that was just something that she felt the burn on and like really didn't need to rub salt in the wound for her to learn the lesson but i still was like googling and looking what other parenting experts would do on these situations and I even phoned a friend and asked friends and family like how do i handle this like i my my precious little angel child just got, was in the principal's office and this is like i don't know what to do I mean, my other kids, like my son, I got a principal call like every every other day from that. I was used to that back then, but like it's been 10 years. And so I'm just kind of wondering like with that kind of stuff. And that's what I mean, making the best decision for me and my daughter and the child that I know I have is different than everything I read on Google, which was like, make sure you give an appropriate punishment and consequence and make sure you hold them accountable. Yeah, well, <clears throat> some of that's built in, but the idea was you have to still filter that between your own child or your own situation, your own circumstance. So all that to really just say, that like your business is different. Maybe you have a disability and you're only able to work two hours a week. And because of that, you need to be really, really efficient because of the circumstances that don't allow you to do things other people do. Not wrong, just different. So the best tool for you might be different than the best tool for me. So you have to ask all of those things. What features are more important to you within a program or service or tool? What features do you feel like you really need to know? Are tutorials really important to you because you really just want to learn it all first and then put it into practice? Are you kind of a learn as you go, just kind of learn it, figure it out, user interface, uh, colors even? You know, like if you literally hate the color green and you are constantly looking at a, a user interface that is green, you're going to be annoyed. So maybe, I mean, that seems so mundane and petty and vain, but like, let's be real. If you don't like the sound of my voice, you're not going to want to listen to this podcast and watch my videos and watch my training because you're going to be like, she's annoying. I can't listen to her for two seconds. Yeah, somebody actually said that to me once. They're like, well, I love your material, but do you have transcripts? Because I just can't stand the sound of your voice. <laughs> it's like, really? Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm not for everyone, thank God. Um, but the reality is that happens. Okay, so you have to think about your particular situation and what con what what your circumstances are. Okay, another question to ask yourself, what tools are available that solve my problem and fit within my budget? So your budget is still really important. Create your goals and your budget first, your budget of both time and money, and then ask that question, what tools are available that solve my problem that fit my budget? And what, what type of time commitment do you have to set aside to learn and implement the new tool? That again is that time and money budget. It's not just about buying this thing, you know, before, you know, the clock's running out, the clock's running out. You guys, the clock's not really running out. I mean, it might be on a specific super fast deal, but it's just like the same thing at Target. Like if you go to Target this week and they cycle their sales. So, you know, like towels are on sale this week and like in another month, towels will be on sale again. They're not, it's not going to be forever. You're never going to do it. And you know what? Honestly, if you need a towel at that point and it's not on sale and you really need it and know that's going to solve your problem, you'll just buy it anyways at regular price. Because at that point, it's not about price. It's about value. It's about, I need this now. This solves my problem. I'm going to buy it. So the truth be told, you don't need all the things all the time. But you do need some. If you want to be more efficient, get your goals faster, help keep yourself on track. There are certain softwares and tools and stuff that I think are very, very important to have. But have you ever purchased something that you were afraid to miss out on? And then you never actually took the time to learn like my Pinterest course. Yeah. If you have one of those programs sitting there, tools, apps, software, maybe that's where you need to place your focus. Ask those questions about those things right now. And then you can dismiss them and get rid of the guilt. That's what I did with the Pinterest thing. I was like, yep, I spent $27 on nothing. And I've probably done that before too. 
of like, nope, I didn't even open the Pinterest course. It's not even valuable to my business right now. It's not even valuable to myself as a person right now because even personally, I'm not gonna like create pins to make money off of with my jewelry art or my recipes that I'm following. So it's like, this was just really a, a, an impulsive FOMO kind of decision. Make time to learn and implement it if it's still important to your business. If it's not gonna help you right here and right now, then you can just dismiss it. Let the guilt go and just be like, yep, yeah, I spent money on that, it was a waste, but now, did you know something? Like you can't unlearn or unhear what I'm saying to you. So you're like instantly accountable for this information because you're listening to this podcast and you're like, oh yeah, Christian just said, you know, I'm wasting my money on this and that. You have to ask yourself these questions. If the tool or service or software doesn't fit into those questions, say no. Give yourself a minute to walk away on the FOMO and say, okay, what am I losing? What am I gaining? Is this important to my business where I'm at right now? What problem does it solve? Does it meet my budget, time, and money budget? Will it help me in my business right now? You don't necessarily need more information. You just need the right information. Every day that goes by that you're not using tools that you've invested in, you're wasting money. And since, I mean, if you really like wasting money, I would literally, I'll give you my PayPal address. And every time you just feel like wasting money, just send me checks. Send me digital cash. Ven I accept Venmo, PayPal, credit cards, cash, change. I'm even up for barter. So if you're into wasting money, I got a place for you to put it. But seriously. If you hear about a new product or service and you want to know if it's the right fit for you, then go directly to the source. Watch their tutorial videos, read reviews, watch YouTube videos on how it works, not from friends and family and other people there. Of course, friends and family have the best recommendations for stuff because those are people you already trust. So if you already know and trust somebody and they say, oh, my best, you know, plumber is so-and-so, then you definitely want to call so-and-so because it's better than trying to Google it and figure out if, you know, Johnny down the road is the better plumber than what, you know, Susie said. Because if Susie said this is the plumber to go with, Susie has all of my trust and so I'm going to call Susie's plumber. Same type of thing. Go right to the source of the place. If you want to know how Helium 10 works, go to Helium 10 and, and watch their free tutorials. Read the reviews, look at it, read their re refund policy, you know, all those types of things. Match your needs, Ma match things up with your needs, the needs in your business and your budget. Ask someone you trust if you know and like it. If you guys ever want to know about a software or something or a service or a person or something like that in the industry, just DM me and I'll be happy to answer you and let you know um, my opinions, good, bad, or otherwise. I mean, if you're asking, I'm telling you whether you like it or not, I guess. Remember that tools and products and services are not permanent. It's not permanent. Sometimes you need tools in the beginning that you don't need forever and it's okay to cancel them. You're, you're not going to hurt someone's feeling. Well, you might be, I guess that's an assumption, but like it's business, it's not personal. So if you decide that you've been paying for Helium 10 for four months and you haven't even logged in, it's time to cancel Helium 10 and go sign up when you're ready because you're not ready. You're ready the day that you sign up and log in and start learning and start using. So unless that's what you are ready to do, then cancel it. Just cancel it. I know, cut it off, rip it off like a Band-Aid. It's not hard. Okay, it is hard. It's hard for some of us to let go. I'll just admit that. But just rip it off like a Band-Aid and then come to me in three months and ask me if you either missed the $300 or you actually decided you're going to implement the Helium 10 and actually use it and then now you don't feel like you're wasting money and then there's no guilt and then there's no shame and you just feel like a normal regular person. Yeah, you see how I struggle with all these things too? This is just like me, a therapy session. I'm talking to myself and you and we're all just kind of working all of these overthinking, analyzing, analysis paralysis stuff right now. So <laughs> thanks for being here for me too, guys. But, you know, sometimes tools are not a good fit for you in the moment and they might be a good fit later on down the road and you might outgrow some tools. You know, I've had some tools before that I've canceled because I just haven't needed them anymore. I've created my own systems or I've implemented something new. And it like back in the day, we used Aweber um, for like our email um system and things like that. But then I outgrew Aweber. And so I canceled Aweber and went to something different that then supported my new needs. So that's totally, it's not personal. It's just something that you have to continually do and upgrade and change if it doesn't work for you. Some tools 
might be a perfect fit later. This does not mean that you invest in it right now just because they're running a deal, they will run another deal eventually. Unless they're closing their company and they're giving you a one-off product that you can literally like, like the jersey I talked about, you know, that's a tangible holdable thing that they're not going to manufacture anymore. But there's always availability of all these things for years. There's some of you that have been hearing about wholesale bundle system since way back when it was created in 2014, 2015, when I first launched the bundles course. Some of you guys took it then and you're still on board. And some of you guys just heard of this last week. And some of you have been on the fence for this whole time. And guess what? I'm not here to convince you. I'm here to ask you the same questions I'd be asking myself if I was faced with the purchase. Is this what I need in my business right now? Why or why not? Does this help me get to my goal? And in what way? And if the answer is yes, then yes, buy the wholesale bundle system. But if the answer is no, this is not what I need right now. What I really need first is X, Y, Z or whatever. If you're retail arbitraging and you want to move into wholesale, then wholesale bundles is perfect for you. It teaches you wholesale and then bundles and you can do what you want with it. But if you're just not ready to make that step, that's perfectly okay. You know why? Because wholesale bundles is not going anywhere. I mean, yes, the price is going to increase significantly soon um, because the 3.0 version is going to be launching and soon. I keep saying soon. I will not tell you a date yet because uh, I don't have one. That's the fact. Um, but the reality of that is it's not going away. You might have to pay a little bit more for it when you're ready for it because the price is going up, but that is no reason to buy it now and just sit on it. If you're going to buy it now, use it now. You know why? Because thousands of students have succeeded with Wholesale Bundles 2.0. So if they're going to succeed with 2.0, they're for sure going to succeed with 3.0, even better because it's bigger, better, and just more awesome than all the other ones. Because if you're going to utilize it now, I mean, first of all, if you got wholesale bundles now, and no, this is not a commercial for wholesale bundles, but if you got wholesale bundles right now at today's price, by the time 3.0 launches, you could have already launched like 10 bundles by then. So if you're ready to implement, now is the time. But if you're not ready to implement and you're not ready to, to start creating bundles and create listings and send that stuff in before Q4, because Q4 is coming, right? This is the time we prepare for Q4. It's literally like June, July, August, you're ready. Q4 is like over by then mentally because you've already ordered your products and created your listings and you're sending them in. So you're not really doing the work of Q4 in Q4. You're doing the work of Q4 right now in Q3 or Q2. So... Investing in your business and investing in yourself is very important. But over-investing in things that you don't need is not actually an investment. It's a waste. It's a waste. I liken it to like someone without legs buying a bicycle. Not a special bicycle for people without legs, but just like, here, you have no legs. Ride this bike. The bike is awesome. The bike's probably worth every single thing that they're selling the bike for, but the bike is not for you. <laughs> so I'm just trying to put that in perspective for you. So you think about the bike. I mean, and I'm try not trying to offend anyone. It's really hard to come up with analogies and examples that don't somehow offend somebody somewhere. But you understand what I'm saying, right? You understand what I'm saying. You don't need all the things. You need the best things for you in your business. Now, research, y'all know it's my favorite word, right? Research what research what you want. What are the best features? What are the things that you want? Do the research and create. This is the one more final thing about the decisions. Number one was the goals. What do you want to accomplish with this tool or service? Your budget and your, your time and money budget. What can you afford to invest in this specific tool to reach this goal? And then the final piece of the puzzle is so that we don't overanalyze and we don't overthink and then become indecisive and then procrastinate and then kick the can down the road and still get nothing done. Create a deadline for your decision. So say you see one of those emails or a post on Facebook or somewhere else and it says, oh, come to this live webinar and you're going to learn how to, I mean, I'm, I'm going to like take this from a page from Facebook that I saw recently it was like, come and learn how you don't have, you know, you don't have to send in physical products into Amazon to make money on Amazon. You can do everything KDP, blah, 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 whatever, which 
I'm not against and I'm not for because I don't have all the information. But then you go to the webinar and you realize all of these different things all the time. And, you know, they're talking to you about stop touching product and you don't ever have to do that. And it's not drop shipping and you can just like create your own Kindle books and send them all out there and all that kind of stuff. Is that a great course? Yes. Will that course make you money? Most likely. Um, is it a good idea and a good opportunity? Yes, they all are. But is it a good opportunity for you right now, considering all of the other balls that you have in the air and all the other hats that you're wearing? Is that a good opportunity for you right now? And when and how will you implement that? If you don't have answers to that, do not input your credit card. Just create the deadline for the decision. If you need more time to make that decision, I know a lot of people need days or even weeks to really contemplate and think. But let's be honest. If we have specific questions to say yes, 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 or no, no, no to some things, create a deadline for the decision. So say you watch that same webinar that I was watching and they say, okay, you have 24 hours to make this decision before this deal goes away. Number one, tell yourself the deal's not going away. Eventually they will run another deal or you can watch another webinar from someone else and you'll see the same thing. Join their email list so that you don't miss out on future promotions or don't. Is it going to solve a business problem for you right now? If the answer is no, walk away. You learned something, you spent your time there, but now it's time to walk away. Create a deadline. If you're not sure and you need more information or you need to do a little bit of research, then say, okay, I'm going to spend one more hour researching this particular thing and I'm going to get a yet, give myself a yes or no deadline by 5 p.m. And then by 5 p.m., you add, a, add something to your phone, calendar, and, you know, just tell Alexa to, to add it to your calendar. I don't know. But when you do that, then at 5 p.m. on that day, you're going to say, yes, I'm going to buy this, buy this service, product, whatever it is, and this is the reason. Or no, I'm choosing to walk away from this opportunity right now because... It does not solve a problem in my business right now where I'm at. I do not have the time to implement these changes into my business. So that would be a, just a no. You're not hurting anyone's feelings by saying no. You're not even hurting anybody's feelings by unsubscribing to their emails. You're just like, nope, this is not a good fit for me right now. And just let it go. You know why? Because it might be a fit for you in six months. And then you know exactly who to reach out to when you need that tool. You can get stuck in research mode forever. That's why you need to ask yourself these questions and make it a quick decision. Yes, 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 no, no, no. Does that mean all of the feelings of FOMO are gonna go away? No, but fe feelings are just feelings. Feel them, validate them, understand where they're coming from. Be curious about them, but don't judge them. Just be like, okay, I really feel like I missed out on that opportunity, I didn't buy that course. But, it's not a good fit for me right now. I cannot implement it. So that justifies the no. And you can justify the yes or the no, whatever it is. When you get stuck in research mode, you're in analysis paralysis, and it's really a struggle. Instead, get the best information possible. Answer these questions for yourselves and then decide, put a deadline on your decision. Give yourself time to become familiar with what they offer and when and how often. Maybe schedule an education day for yourself. Once you do pull the trigger on something, which I encourage you to do if it's the right fit. If it's the right fit at the moment. Like creatives, for example. When when Ian Bauer a couple episodes ago um, approached me about creatives and showed me the tool, I was literally like, take my money. I literally was like handing him the credit card before he even finished. You know why? Because that solved an immediate problem in my business in the moment. I need help with graphics. I'm not good at graphics for my products. I do the best I can, but you guys, I am a, I just design is not my wheelhouse. It's not my training. It's not like what I do. And so I bumble through it. And with creatives, it was one of those things where I can be like, oh my gosh, look at these templates and the colors I love. Drop, drag, drop, drag, A plus content. Oh. Like I literally, it solved an immediate problem in my business and it was worth every penny to invest into that service because it's what I need right now. 
But when I look at other services that say, oh, would you like to invest in this tool or like tactical arbitrage or something right now, if somebody tried to sell that to me, I'd be like, well, that's a great service and a great tool, but it's certainly not a good fit for me in my business goals right now. My business goals are to be 100% wholesale bundles and to continually create bundles that my customers are liking. And tactical arbitrage is arbitrage. And so that doesn't fit with what I'm doing. I mean, it's a great tool and service. And yeah, it could maybe save me some time and money when it comes to research the way that they do research, but it's not something I need in my business to achieve my goals. So I can pass on that. It's the ones that are in between that you're not quite sure, or you just really like, like the Pinterest one. I just really love Pinterest. So I wanted to like be excited for this lady because she's creating all these great things. And I wanted to like support her business, but I also was like, not going to use that in my business at all. I just made an emotional decision. So literally, I'm going to go over these a couple more times. I'm going to ask the questions a little bit slower. So if you really want to write them down right now, it's fine before I can get to making you a checklist of here. But these are just things you want to ask yourself with the new tools, how to make the best decisions for the right tools in your business. Number one, your goals. What Ask yourself, what would I be able to accomplish by adding this tool? What is the main problem in my business that I want to solve right now? And define that. What is my budget, both in time and in finances, that I can afford? What am I willing to spend to accomplish my goal? Does this make sense for my business right now? Do I have the time to implement the tool right now? Okay. And then when it comes to the actual service that you're looking for and you're trying to analyze whether or not it's a good fit for you, then ask these questions. What features are most important to me within a program or service or tool? Is it more of communication styles? Is it more of video and audio? Do you prefer to read everything? Do you like tutorials? Is the user interface really important for you visually? Are you a visual learner and you need to have those things? Uh, Another thing, what kind of time commitment can you set aside to learn and implement this new tool and or strategy? Ask yourself these questions and then give yourself the deadline. I will make the decision on this particular tool, software, course, blah, 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 at this time and date. So just really thinking about those things with the analysis paralysis is because we we feel all over the place. We know we need all kinds of things in our business. I do too, y'all. I need a marketer. I need a, a, another copyright. I mean, I could literally, if I had unlimited funds, I would probably have five more team members to be helping me do things, but my budget doesn't allow that. So I have to feel like what is the most important thing I'm trying to accomplish this year, this month, this week, and what are the tools and resources that are a best fit for me right now? Because we can't always count on later. We can't always, you know, invest. Yeah, invest in the future. The way that you invest in your future is to do your best today. Because the results of the future come with what you're doing right now. So whatever it is that you're doing right now, I want you to be encouraged to stop overanalyzing, stop overthinking, and instead stop the cycle and ask the questions. Ask them and answer them as if you were talking to me. Say if you were, it's like, okay, you know, it could be like, well, what would Kristen ask me right now? Well, I would ask you all these questions. Is this a good fit for you and your business right now? Will this help you accomplish your goal? So if your big goal is I want to make a million dollars on Amazon in 2022 or by 2025 or something like that and say, is this strategy tool, this, that, and the other going to help me get to that goal? Well, with wholesale bundle system, the answer is yes. Of course, it's going to help you get to that goal because it sets you apart from all of your competition. It includes private labeling and business assets that you can sell later on. No one's talking about that. So ask yourself those questions. Learn those processes. And then be proud of yourself instead of feeling guilty or shame or FOMO or all that kind of stuff. Be like, I'm proud of myself that I made the best decision for my business in the moment. You get to own all of that. 
all of the decisions, all of the overthinking, it's your choice to make. So thank you guys so much. I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing, listening to any other person. And so I don't take that for granted. Thank you so much for watch watching and listening. And if you have other trainings or other requests that you'd like to learn about, please drop me a line. You can email me at kristen at mommyincome.com. You can leave comments below this video. You can, leave, you can leave me a DM on all the socials, whatever you want to contact me. I want to be able to create trainings and podcasts podcasts and things like that that are the most beneficial for you in the moment. So thank you so much for listening to the Amazon Files podcast. We'll see you same time, same place next week.